I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today, we're going to work on making repeating vector patterns using Inkscape. And I wanted to do a theme of like a Hawaiian or like South Pacific tropical theme, something warm. So for this tutorial, I originally made these, this manta ray pattern, but it kind of looks like bats. So we are going to make this floral pattern as you see here on this pillow. And then the difference between just tiling out a pattern just with a bunch of squares and what we're going to do is this creates like a seamless repeating pattern like you'd see on wallpaper or like a couch or something. And it takes a little bit of setup, but it's pretty easy to do. So go ahead and choose the rectangles and squares tool here. And if you hold shift and control together, it'll bring out a uniform square. Mine's red. I want like a nice neutral background we can build our pattern on. So if you don't have your fill and stroke menu up, it's this paintbrush in the corner. So you can choose like something nice and simple or just on the color bar, just light gray. I don't want this stroke. So for stroke, you can X out of that. And the setup requires something that's uniform because we're going to reflect part of the pattern that, that bleeds over the edge so it matches up. So to do that, we'll just choose a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. So I'm on millimeters. So this shape, this object here, it can be controlled by the width and the height. So go to, go to pixels and then for width, go to a thousand, enter, and then height, a thousand, enter. Okay, the next part, this is the most important part to make the effect work. So go to edit, then preferences, then if you don't have behavior open, it's right here, behavior. And then you go to steps and see how mine is set to 2.0000 pixels. That's how much when you hit the arrow key, it moves whatever object over. But to make this effect nice and seamless and uniform, change that to a thousand. So like a thousand pixels, enter. It'll make more sense when you see it start to add the pattern to it. So ch choose a beautiful subject for your pattern. Let's go with that flower. So I got this flower from Wiki Commons, and I'm gonna have the link in the description. Let me just pull it in so, you, so we all have it. And this is coming in as an SVG editable object, 300 DPI, and then just push OK. And there it is. Okay, so we have our beautiful flower. <laughs> okay, let's do this. I'm gonna stay in this color range down here with these reds, this range. So to start, I've got my hibiscus selected. I'll choose just red, and then we'll pull it over onto our pattern square. It's a little too big. I'll resize it. And then you see how I'm, I'm on the edge here? So because we set up the arrow key step to be a thousand pixels and the square is a thousand pixels, when I, I'm gonna do Control D to duplicate it, and then I'm going to push the arrow key left once. And so it's reflected perfectly lined up. So when we end up stamping out this square, our pattern will, will match up. And it doesn't matter how big you make it, it's gonna keep flowing as it goes. So that's good. So we'll Control D, make this one. Maybe we'll make this one smaller. Maybe we'll rotate it a little bit. And then let's make it darker. In my little color strip here, I'll make that a dark maroon. Control D. Since that one's in the center, we don't have to do a duplication in, in a step. So it can just be wherever it is. But then down here, uh, I think I'll do, if it's selected, you see this like left, right arrow? Click on that. That'll change the direction just for some variety. Maybe tweak it a little bit. And then make that one maybe pink. Maybe a nice pink. So because I'm over the edge, I have to duplicate it and go up there. So I have it selected. Control D to make a second one, and then I'll up arrow once. And then, oh, look, it's overlap. That's okay. This part's overlap too. We don't want that. But see how this overlap and that overlap? That's fine. It'll actually look kind of cool as it expands. But let's make a couple more. So Control D on this one. And then maybe, should we go upside down? Should we go? Let's go. Yeah, we'll make this. This is going to be like omnidirectional here. Should we leave our color palette? Should we go to like orange? That's all, man. That this, this this could be going into like tacky. Is this is hibiscus too on the nose for Hawaii? I think it's okay. Um, no, but let's let's stay with our color palette here, and then pink. Pink looks good. And since we're over the edge, we'll do Control D to duplicate, and then down arrow one to get those matched up. And I have space for one more, so I'll duplicate one more time. Just change the size, rotate, and then they can overlap a little bit. And we need what color have we not used? Light pink. Fine. All right, so now we have to collect all of the flowers so they are grouped together. So just click on one of them, then you can do shift and get the rest of them. And then once they're all selected, do actually we'll just do it this way. Go to object group 
or you can do, I think it's control G. So that is now grouped. Now the, the underlying square, that has to be duplicated also. So control D to that, that's gonna put it on top, which is where we want it, because now we're gonna stamp out the flowers. So the whole thing's gonna be kind of collapsed into our, ne our new pattern. So I have my square selected, then hold shift, then hold your flowers, then go to object, clip, set. <laughs> there it is. Look at this pattern. So then I always, I go off into no man's land and I group the whole thing. So control G. You, you might be like, well, what's the big deal? You just created a, a box with the shapes in it. Well, this is what it is. So if you do control D on your new pattern, because we still have that step at a thousand, just click over one and you see how it matches up. It's connected or you can go downward. So control D and then downward. You can, you can make it as big as you want. And this can be used in apparel or um, like the pillowcase we had. It's just, and it's just your imagination is the limit. You can make any pattern you want. You can do all sorts of different things. But in this case, we did hibiscus because I've been dreaming about Hawaii. Now there's a shortcut I wanna show you how to arrange your pattern. So click on one of the squares, control D to duplicate it, then move into some open space. And this is a tool, it's called Create Clone Tiles. So we'll go to Edit, Clone, Create Clone Tiles, and then it, it blows out your menu bar here. And then my Inkscape has a glitch. It won't open unless I click off of it, then click back on it, and then it works. So maybe you have that, maybe you don't. But then to make it work, just keep it on the regular simple translation. And then this lets you choose how many squares you want to tile out. So I have it on two by two, create, and it's the same thing we had up there. So there you go. That is how you can make a repeating pattern in Inkscape. And you can use anything you want. You can do any shape, any animal, you can do a theme. I had a, um, an 80s theme going on, but a too, too long tutorial. So yeah, keep dreaming of um, warm weather and see you.